Hey guys, so it's Daniel, and I'm here today with Jared Freed, uh, local motive staffer and uh, regional area rep. Is that right? Yep. So um, he recently got that promotion, so congrats to him. Thank you. Um, so uh, today we're going to be talking about flat oil patterns. So flat oil pattern is not your typical house shot. Um, it is something where there's the same amount of oil on every single board on the lane, and so it makes it very difficult um, because no matter where you throw the ball, it's going to do the same thing. So if you miss your target to the right, then it's going to continue down the lane, and if you miss your target to the left, it's really gonna hook past the head pin. Um, and so we're gonna talk about the best strategy uh, and how to attack a flat oil pattern. So I'll let Jared start. So Jared, if you were bowling on a flat oil pattern, completely flat, one-to-one -one ratio, um, let's not talk about the length, but just the ratio, uh, what is the first thing that you would want to do? Uh, so basically, let's say you don't know what the pattern is. Throw a shot, see what it does. Um, then you can adjust off of that. But if you know what the you know what the pattern and you know it's flat, then you want to. I guess I would try and break down the right side of the lane, try and give myself a little bump, so that way if I do miss right, it will hook. Um, typically, you'd want something that would give you a smoother look. Mm -hmm. Probably slow down down lane. Um, and so in my case, like maybe like a forge flare um, surface on the shock. That might do good. But you don't want shiny balls. Shiny yeah. balls would not be very good for you on this pattern. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So so Jared has a higher rev rate than I do, um, but he also has a higher ball speed than I do too. So <clears throat> he's able to play a little bit straighter sometimes, especially on a flatter pattern. That helps him out. Um, not having to cover so many boards because the more boards you cover, the more traffic that you're going to run into and the more potential problems that you can have. Uh, not to say you can't have success by curving it on a flat pattern, but it's going to be more challenging for you. Um, you know, straighter is greater really comes into play. Um, so I know you said the Venom Shock with some surface on it, the Forge Flare. Um, what about like urethane? Have you ever, Ooh, you know, yeah, thought about yeah. using urethane on a flat pattern? Yes, actually. Um, I don't think I've done it, but mm -hmm. I think it'd be very helpful to get it to read early and then stop. Yeah. So that way it's not going too bonkers down lane. <laughs> yeah. Because that's where you run into your problems on flat patterns. I yeah. do anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Something that you can use to control a flat pattern is urethane because it wants to roll really early and then kind of blend out the back end, not have a, hun a ton of back end uh, hook down lane, which is really good for a flat pattern because once again, you know, straighter is greater and being able to control that. And if you get nine on your first shot on a flat pattern, you should be pretty content. Very good. Yes, uh, especially if you do it consistently, because that's good. Um, you know, because the scores typically on a flat pattern are going to be much lower, especially compared to something like a house shot. Uh, so those scores are going to be lower. So if you can continue to get nine, just work on your spares. And as long as you're shooting those spares and keeping that up, then you'll find yourself near the top eventually. Um, so yeah, uh, is there any other sort of strategy or anything like that that you might em uh, employ? on a flat pattern hmm. not that I can think of right now okay but. yeah and definitely mentally one one thing that I'll just quickly talk about is is you, like I said you're getting nine is okay um, but you want to make sure that you're mentally staying level you know you don't want to get too amped up if you shoot you know that good game maybe a 220 even would be really good on the on the really flat patterns that are really difficult um, you know anything down to a 180 is probably going to be okay you know, uh, especially if you're minimizing those mistakes and just getting nine consistently, then definitely mentally staying level is, is the best idea possible. And that'll keep you in it, you know, for things uh, where you might see a flat pattern like junior gold or, or uh, you know, college bowling or anything like that. I know that we bowled on uh, a 39 foot flat pattern this past season um, at the Hoosier. And so something like that is, is just keeping your headspace very level making sure that you're not getting too amped up about anything, whether it's negative or positive, and then it'll definitely give you a key to success. So now I'm going to go out on the lanes and throw uh, some shots and give you guys some input on a flat pattern and kind of explain what it is that I'm doing out there and kind of use some of Jared's advice too that he just said and put that into practice and see how that we come out. So thanks for joining me. Yep. All right, guys, so I uh, just threw some shots. Uh, on red square and I've got some videos to kind of go over real quick I started by breaking down the pattern with the venom shock like Jared and I talked about um, in the beginning 
Uh, but then I went to urethane, threw my purple hammer, some shots, and it looked pretty good. Um, but it did force me pretty far right, which isn't bad um, because, like we said, straighter is greater. But um, it definitely did force me right. I also threw my UC3 for some shots, and uh, that went well too. But I was able to play closer to second arrow with that. Uh, but the best look out of them was definitely that Venom Shock with the surface. Um, so I put 1,000 on it about halfway through my practice session and was able to control the back end with that surface um, because that 1,000 grit uses more energy up front in the front part of the lane um, and kind of blends it out down lane where the ball doesn't have as much energy to use down lane. Um, so what kind of surface would you recommend using on something like Red Square, Jared? I mean, I would start with probably 15 to 1,000. And then if that's not enough, you can try 500. But then once the transition hits, I think that's just going to either burn up or read too early. Right. So you bring up a great point about transition. So something on flat patterns that is quite a bit different than your typical house shot is transition. Since a lot of people do try and throw urethane on uh, flat patterns, we'll kind of talk about that first. So when you throw urethane, it carries oil down the lane. And because of that, you kind of lose that back end reaction. And if somebody on your lane is using like a 500 grit or a 360 grit even, um, then it can really burn up the front part of the lane. But if it's on urethane, then it's still going to burn up that front part of the lane, but it's also going to push down oil. Because no matter what surface is on the urethane ball, it's not going to absorb any oil. So uh, because of that, the front part of the lane will really start to hook early, but then you'll get no reaction down lane. So what do you do? Well, for me, I would like to grab something that's uh, not super shiny, but definitely a little shinier. Um, so like that 3000 or 4000 grit and move just a little bit left and use what they've burned and created right there in the front part of the lane as my miss room right. Um, so now I'm able to kind of circle the ball around that spot uh, down lane. So let's say that around uh, six down lane is where that it's really hanging, where that carry down is. Then try to get the ball to like four down lane. And if you're using a little bit shinier ball, it'll really respond to that friction uh, that's being burned out there. And it'll be really good. And you can kind of use that as your miss room right. Now on a flat pattern like this, you're not going to have a ton of miss room, uh, but you will at least have a little bit. Is that kind of a strategy that you would use as well, Jared? Yes, actually. Um, I would go to a blue coral venom, um, something, you know, 3000 surface, not too mm -hmm. shiny. Mm -hmm. um, maybe get to an iron forge just because it has such a chuggy core. Yeah, absolutely. For me, that'd be like my Zen Master that I keep at 4000. Um, something like that, you know, where I, where I have the lane shine. Uh, and then eventually, like he was saying with the iron forge, the equivalent to me would be a Zen. Um, so that would be a good kind of combo there. Uh, just as going from a blue coral venom to an iron forge, I would be going from a shiny Zen Master to a little bit shinier Zen uh, eventually. That way I can just get the ball through the through the fronts, down the lane, and really get that back in reaction. Now typically, uh, the transition isn't going to happen immediately, um, but it can happen faster depending on who you're bowling with. So if you're bowling with somebody like Jared, who's got a high rev rate, then it might happen a little faster than if you're bowling with somebody like Walter Ray Williams Jr., who doesn't have a high rev rate and just kind of throws it a lot straighter. Um, so because of that, it can affect what kind of uh, carry down and what kind of breakdown that you're going to see with the oil pattern on the lane. But as the day goes on, it should become a little bit and a little bit easier uh, as the games progress. Not to say that it's going to be super high scoring like a house shot, because I don't think it should be ever. Um, but the expectation is that as it continues to break down and you see the oil dissipate on the right side of the lane, uh, then it should become a little bit easier. Um, so do you have anything else to add? Um, for your, we you say Zen Master with mm -hmm. shinier ball. Um, mm -hmm. I think I might be able to go to a recoil, in that, um, mm -hmm. in that stance. I'd probably, it's shined up. It's got lane shine. I don't put surface on it. I don't think it needs surface. Recoil is one of the best balls, in my opinion. I love it. I just got another one. So yeah. Um, I think I could go with that and stay out of trouble. It might read too early. Then again, straighter's greater. I don't want to move left. Um, have it burn up down lane you know right yeah so so I'll put a shot or two here of of when I tried to really jump left and throw the ball to the right you can see what happened I missed the head pin every single time and the reason for that is because the oil is still there and you know I only bowled for maybe 30 minutes so it was not really able to break down a ton and because of that uh, every time that I would throw the ball to the right I would miss the head pin to the right which is expected because there's still oil out there because it's flat 
Um, so something like that can definitely happen. And don't be discouraged because everybody's human. You're going to make the mistakes. You're going to throw the ball out the window for a shot or two at least every game. You know, you can kind of anticipate that, but don't expect it. Just anticipate it so that you can make your spare right after and say, hey, that was just a bad shot. I'll throw a good one next time I get up on the approach. But yeah, so otherwise, uh, shout out to Jared. Uh, thanks for him joining me here in the uh clips and uh really appreciate it yeah so uh otherwise um i'll put his youtube channel down in the description be sure and go check it out subscribe here and then subscribe there uh to both of us give us both some love um but yeah i appreciate it guys and i hope you have a great day and